Hello sailors, you're watching the Dodger Kebab, and this video is my celebration for having amassed over 10,000 subscribers. The idea was thrown around the Dodger Kebab Facebook page that I should do a Q&A with the fans. So I asked the questions, and that's what I got. Flair is going to read them to me, and I'm going to answer them unscripted and right off the cuff. Right, so let's go! When are we going to make a video together? As you can see, that's from Mr. Games Master Reviews. Yes, I mean, obviously we will make something together at some point. We've said this for ages, for well over a year now. Whether it will be some sort of video review together, or whether it will be some sort of podcast, yeah, definitely do something. You definitely have to get something on the go. So, yes, something at some point together, yes. What do you think of retail and more specifically about WOD? Are you even playing right now? That's two questions there. Let's, let's do the first bit. What I think of retail, and uh, more specifically Warlords of Draenor, uh, I quit at Mr. Pandaria, so, you know, I haven't really even played Warlords of Draenor on, on um, retail, so I don't really know too much. I just ha had too much of a bad experience after Mr. Pandora area to continue. I just, no, no. Are you even playing, am I even playing right now? Not, not retail, no, no, only private servers. What are your plans for the future of the channel? Are you only planning on doing WoW private servers review or some other kind of videos? The future of the channel, let's see. Well, I do plan on doing other videos more than just private servers. I mean, I already do. I mean, really, I haven't really thought about beyond what I'm already doing. I know a lot of people don't really watch the other videos that I put on here, which aren't private server reviews, where, you know, where I just play other video games and talk about other video games. I, you know, I get a, a, quite a few thousand people watching it, but they're obviously not as popular as World of Warcraft server reviews. But I am going to keep doing those, so they're going to keep going. I'm not, about the future, I don't know. I'm going to keep doing more of the same, more reviews, more other games. We'll just see how it goes. What is Corecraft anyway? Is it a private server of Minecraft mod? Okay, I don't actually know if this is a joke question or a serious one. I've got the feeling it's a joke question. So, no. No, but if by some fluke it's not, just search World of Corecraft on Google. Just, just search that. You think Corecraft, if released, will live up to the hype? Yes, yes, I do think it will live up to the hype. I think it's going to be a massive server. I think if they release tomorrow with their current build that they are using, it would live up to the hype. It is really, really tight, really, really good. Do And I can see there's another question sort of hidden in there, isn't there? If released, yes, I, it will be released. And I have a feeling I know when that is. I have more than a feeling, but I can't really talk about that right now. What's your real name? So I can spam you. What's my real name? Brian, what's my motherfucking name? Dodgy Kebab, is it true you own a Nissan Skyline R34? No, I don't own a Nissan Skyline R34, but here is some footage of me really driving my car. Would you rub one up thinking about Lady Sylvanas getting gang wrapped? I totally would. Wh what? How old are you? How old am I? Ah, well, when I was at school, we had Windows 3.1, so work it out. What does a private server need to have to be perfect? Do you hate PvP because you suck at it? I don't think a private server can ever be perfect, because we're all looking for different stuff, really, aren't we? I mean, I like Primal Well, but there's a lot of people that prefer the pure, pure Blizzlight stuff like Nostrils or Kronos. You know, so I, I don't think you'll ever have anything that can be regarded as perfect, because, you know, you can't, can't please everyone all the time. And do I hate PvP because I suck at it? No, I don't, I don't really, really hate PvP. I've just never really got into it, so I just have it as a running joke. Anyway, next. Have you ever been offered money for a review? Have I ever been offered money for a review? Yes. Three different servers have offered me money for reviews in the past, and every time I've said no. And I'll always say no, because my reviews are not for sale. If I ever started selling reviews, then my channel loses all legitimacy, doesn't it? It's, it'd be pointless if I started doing that, because my reviews wouldn't ever mean a thing, and no one could ever trust what I said. Total waste of time. So it would just be just totally short-sighted if I did something like that. 
That said, I am open to the idea of selling advertisement space. So much in the same way you read a magazine and you'd read an article or whatever in the magazine and the next page there's an advertisement for soup or something, I don't know. Like, I don't mind if someone came up to me, some service said, you know, look, would you put a video up which just said, here's the server name, here's our website, here's a little bit of footage and just, just show it, that's it. And as long as I'm not actually adding my opinion to it, you know, I don't mind selling a bit of advertisement space, but I'm not ever going to sell my opinion. So that's that's where I sort of draw that line there. So but I've never even sold advertisement space yet, so that's not even not even any time soon, I don't think. When's your next WoW meetup? When's the next WoW meetup? I don't remember the last one. Are you willing to branch out into other MMOs to expose more people to different games on the market? Am I willing to branch out into other MMOs? Not really, no, because I don't really have the time to spend to learn doing another MMO on top of World of Warcraft, on top of the other game videos that I do. It's, I just don't have that amount of time to spend on learning another huge game you know, like that. I did once consider doing Final Fantasy XIV, but I just don't have the sort of time for that anymore, so unfortunately no. What is your next project after Primal Wow? My next project after Primal Wow is this video, actually. No, but after the next review is going to be probably Ashram, because that's the one I put on hold to do Primal. It's that, that will either be the next video or there's a different idea for a different video game one that I'm toying around with so I might do that next and I probably should get round to doing another uh, vanilla versus modern WoW video so I, I'm not sure what exactly it's going to be but it's going to be one of those they're, they're, they're all coming up at some point Do you think that a good WOD server is possible? Do I think a good Warlords Drenner is possible? Yes, it's possible, but I think it's a long way off. You know, I, I'm not sure if we've even got good Mr. Pandaria realm yet. I've not really tried WoW Freaks, apparently that's quite good, but I, I'm not really sure how far away we really are from that. It's, it's probably way off in the future yet, so uh, not something I'm really thinking about. How did you start and why do you like tanking as a warrior? How did I start playing World of Warcraft? Um, I started by watching my mate who used to play. He had a character on Earth and Ring, first of all, on the EU server, called Chronoleth, and he was a warlock. He used to play during Vanilla and then Burning Crusade. And I think eventually Wrath of the Lich King, but I think he sort of lost interest about them. He was in a guild called Lost Chapter, I think, and he was like one of the best warlocks there was around. And I used to watch him play all the time, and then eventually I bought it. I, I bought it about the time Burning Crusade came out, although I'd played a little bit of vanilla around his house you know a little bit here and there um there is another question tacked onto this one why do i like tanking as warrior because when i first started playing the game i thought well i don't know too much about the game so i'll pick warrior seems like a obvious easy choice and i just liked it and stuck with it obviously i have tried other classes since then and i but i just just like warrior I just just i like tanking i like leading the group i like dictating the pace of the of the game, it's, it's just how I've learned to play and I enjoy how I do it. Do you play retail and private servers or do you only play on private servers when you are making a review? Do I play retail and private servers when I'm making reviews? I only play the server in question when I'm making a review. I don't, I don't even really play retail at all really now. I think that last time I even had a blast on retail was just as Warlords of Drenor was coming out and I got, <clears throat> I got a little bit free time so I used it up there but I didn't really play very much at all. Okay, I guess I'll start. What qualities make a great server? Like I know when you criticize pathfinding and general bugs. But I've also seen you appreciate great new features that did not originate in retail. Like the GM chat channel from Excalibur, I think it was. To be a truly great server these days, I think because there's so many good ones around, which are 
well programmed these days. You know, you've got the likes of Nostrils and Kronos. You've got some really, really strongly programmed servers. So I think minimal bugs is is a definite requirement now. You can't. There's no more. You can just get away with putting that out some sort of half ass shit no more because it just won't work. I think something else. Uh, to stand out from the crowd, I don't think that's the most important thing now. I actually think that somebody said a really good thing in an interview on Jungle Cove a few months back, that one of the most important things now is how you advertise your server and how you have a, a campaign before it's launched, that something Nostril's done amazingly well with is how they had their campaign of showing off the features months and months and months before the servers come out. I think this is also another reason why Cro um, sorry, not Kronos, why Corecraft is going to be hugely popular as well. Everyone knows Corecraft and Corecraft has got this sort of this name behind it which everyone's waiting for, everyone knows what it's going to be about, they've built it up, you know, everyone's ready for it because there's been so much hype. That's what you've got to build up got to build hype up if you want to be at least a big server. <clears throat> to be a great server I think you need a combination of all those things. You've got to have the hype so you get the population. Once you've got the population you've got to make sure there's no bugs there so people stay. I, I think that's that's really what you've got to have. Question. What do you think of the same-sex marriage question? Do you agree with the trend of legalizing it that's going on in Western countries? Question 2. Do you believe in God? Question three, do you prefer porn or erotica? We're going in deep there, straight away. Okay, uh, three questions I see you got there. Right, question one, same-sex marriages. Of course you should allow it. I mean, what kind of crazy fool wouldn't? What always makes me laugh is the, the religious crazy people who say, oh, it's not natural, it's not natural. But you think, well, hang on, gay animals crop up in nature all the time. If you Google gay animals, you'll get gay cats and gay dogs and gay horses, all sorts of gay animals all the time. It's, it's a natural occurrence. So, yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with people being gay at all, is there? So, yeah, let gay people get married. Who cares? It's, uh, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It's no different to heterosexual people getting married. So, yeah, I'm all for it. It doesn't bother me. Question two, do I believe in God? Uh, I don't subscribe to any of the religions in the world, really. I'm not a religious man of any sorts. I, well, it's not to say I, you know, I don't have spiritual feelings. Yeah, sure I do, but I don't think. I think all all the religions that you hear about, are so obviously man-made and man-generated. You know, it's, it's it's ridiculous, and the whole idea of at least in. The, the Christian God, for example, and most gods follow the same sort of pattern, you can tear it apart in such an easy way. It's so obviously flawed and made up. I mean, you, you say, people say, oh yeah, well, God's definitely real. And you go, no, it's not. It's just a load of bollocks. Because listen, right, if God is omnipotent, then God knows everything that's going on, ev everything that's ever going to happen, that anyone's ever going to do at any point in their lives. He knows what your great, 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 great grandchild is going to have for breakfast on their 10th birthday, and he knew that a million years ago. That's omnipotent, knows about everything that's ever going to happen at any one point, anyone and what they're going to think, just everything, you know, everything. That's omnipotent, okay? And then, but God also says that you, if you don't believe in him, you're not going to go to heaven. So you don't believe in God, you're not going to go to heaven. Well, hang on. God knew that when I was born, that I wasn't going to believe in him. He knew this because he's omnipotent. He knew that a billion years ago. Yet he still let me be born to come along and go, no, I don't believe in you. And then he says, oh, well, you can't go to heaven. What? What sort of cunt does that? So, no, it's, it's obviously just bollocks, isn't it? It's just obviously man-made. And question three, I don't actually know the difference. I mean, maybe if I was a single person, I'd probably know more about this, but I don't know what the difference is. I should probably investigate this more. What channels do you watch? And what sites do you read? I mean, where's the madness in a good term coming from? What channels do I watch? Uh, let's see, on YouTube, 
I like watching John Tron. He's obviously my favourite. He's he's really really good. I get a lot of inspiration from him. He's he's excellent. Um, I like Game Sack. I, not a lot of people watch that, but I I do like them. I think they're really good. Uh, who else do I watch on YouTube? I like Jim Sterling. He's he's pretty good. Um, technically not on YouTube, but kind of is. Watch Zero Punctuation. Uh, what else do I watch? Hmm. Let's see, I mean, I w watch, there's some TV programs which I watch. I like, well, liked Top Gear. That was an excellent, excellent show. I liked, um, there's a lot of BBC stuff you uh, like. I watch like QI, that's excellent. Um, I used to like Mock the Week and other things. I used to like a lot of Red Dwarf, that was a great show. And other things, I used to, I listen to a lot of radio as well. I do like a lot of radio and used to really like Chris Miles before he had to leave Radio 1 and like Scott Mills, he's really good. Um, hmm, so yeah, yeah, there are a few of my inspirations there. Why did you start reviewing private servers? Question, what is your fondest moments in WoW? Why did I start reviewing private servers? Mm, let's see, I used to make lots of different videos about different things. But, when I was still playing around with lots of different video ideas, one of the ideas I had was, why don't I do a review of a private server? I mean, I used to do all sorts of different videos and all sorts of different video game subjects. Bearing in mind, I'd already started by this point, there's quite a few episodes in, on my uh, Modern WoW versus Vanilla WoW series. Although it wasn't as good back then, it was actually a bit shit. But, so I thought, oh, I'll do another Warcraft themed one, and done the private server review on Emerald Dream and that went down pretty well so I done the Molten one that went down really well so I just I just kept it going and also I see you stuck another question on the back there what is my fondest moments in World of Warcraft oh I would say definitely playing with my original guild back in Burning Crusade that was they were the they were the golden times for me I think my fondest real fondest ones is first getting the game that first exploration through the world when it was brand brand new like well brand new to me anyway you know i think that's that's the best time isn't it when you're finding everything out new for the first time have you ever talked about some of the funniest slash interesting bugs or flaws on a particular server have i ever talked about the funniest interesting bugs or flaws in a particular server well, I hope I do that every time, really. Are you good at arm wrestling? Am I any good at arm wrestling? No, I am pathetic. Do you think that Warman will become a good, well-programmed server? My name is pronounced Atanas Petrov, just in case I make it in the video. Do I think Warmain will become a good, well-programmed server? Yeah, I think the Wrath of the Lich King realm is going to be really good. That's what I think. I think Carewolf is going to do a good job there. I've spoke to him on, on Skype quite a bit about it, and I know his plans behind it, and I know what him and his staff are doing to make that server work, and a lot of the effort that they're putting in, a, a lot of it you can't see yet because uh, it's a lot of their late stuff isn't live and I know what they're doing to make it work and it's it's gonna be it should be big for me I I think that Molten it started off well when Carewolf was in charge and then obviously once Hermes took control when Carewolf went off to go and do other things game design did you know that that's why he actually he left that he actually went to go and design games not a lot of people know that anyway but once um, Hermes took control obviously he totally ruined it and made it into the molten that everyone associate the name with then obviously that's come round and Carewolf has come back and he's, he's sorting he's sorting the whole new server out again I think it will be good yeah and I think it will be the redemption song of people will go, oh yeah, okay, they were good once, it went downhill, but now it's good again. I think that's what that realm will be. Which server you main? Which server do I main? Well, now I main on Primal Well. What's the best private server you have played? What's the best server I've ever played? Well, for me, it's Primal, but the whole thing's subjective, isn't it? You know, I, 
I like what Primal are offering, so I think for me that is the best server. You might say that for you Atlantis is the best server because you think that they've got the best scripting and, and you prefer the Cataclysm server. So it's subjective, but for me personally, yeah, it's Primal. Can you review Eternal Wild WoW Realm Remorse and their newest Blizzlike PTR Realm? Eternal Wild WoW changed a lot since your review. I think that the server deserves new review. Can I review Eternal WoW again? And because they've, their realm has changed a lot since my review and you think they deserve a new review? Uh, maybe. I, I've not got it on my to-do list, at least. There's a, quite a few servers on my to-do list, but that's not on there. I'm, I never say never, but um, it's not on my radar right now. Why don't you like PvP? You keep mentioning it in your videos, but you have never really explained why. And no, it's not my thing doesn't count Mr. Kebab. Why don't I like PvP? It, it's a running joke. It's just a running joke. So all it is, I don't hate PvP, really, really. It's, it's just something, something to put into each episode just for fun. I don't hate PvP, but I've never really got into it. I've always been about PvE, really. So I don't really hate it in the same way I don't really hate the Horde. I do, really. But um, it's, you know, I just never got into it. And the it's not my thing does count. When will you review Ashran? P.S. It's bugged as hell. When will I review Ashran? Very soon is the answer to that. Very soon. Question. Is there a plan in future to do some other game critics but to be same concept as WoW like bugs? Your opinion. Good stuff. Also, you can do some top 10 stuff that is always fun to watch, and some of your not fun jokes. Is there a plan in the future to do other game critiques in the same concept as well? Uh, kind of. But I think I do that already, if, if, if I'm honest. I think that the video game reviews that I already do, well, not so much reviews, but the playthroughs, like when I played Vigilante or I looked at um, the wrestling games, all those things, they're very much in the same sort of style. They, they're just different games, so you, they've got to be approached differently, that's all. What private server are you playing now? What private server am I playing right now? Well, at the moment, I'm playing nothing. I'm recording this. But if I wasn't recording this, I'd probably be playing PlayStation 3. If I, but if I wasn't playing that, I'd probably be playing Primal. What do you think Blizzard will do for the next expansion about the values? Now we saw item swish, but when they added the new gear, the R like mop. Do you think they will squish again or they will come up with another strategy? Also, what would you do? What do I think Blizzard will do with their next expansion? I think they'll find a way to really ruin the game because they just don't understand what made it good. They've got this mental idea, it, it's been going on for a while now, they've got this mental idea that just because a player doesn't see 100% of the content that is in some way they're losing out, but that is to not understand your own game, which is it is unfathomable that they've gotten this far and got it totally, totally wrong. That they think that if you don't see all the raids and you don't see all the dungeons, then because you haven't experienced the whole whole game, you're, you're losing out. But the reality is that if the game is good, it doesn't matter how far you got. It doesn't matter if you got only 50% of the way through, or 60%, or only 30%. So long as that time was fun, it doesn't matter how far in you got, because it's the journey that's important. It's not the final destination. So they got this idea that making things easier is better for everyone, because you get to see more. But it's ridiculous, because making things harder okay makes the whole idea of uh, effort versus reward actually work okay it might take you ages and ages in vanilla to acquire just a blue item but it feels so worth it and these days epics drop just out your arsehole and it doesn't feel like you've earned anything and that's achievement versus effort because you don't have to put in as much effort these days to get big results 
they don't feel like big results. They don't feel like any effort has gone into it. So their idea of just making everything easier and nerfing everything and dumbing it down, that's why that idea is so flawed. Because it doesn't matter that you didn't see the end of the game. It doesn't matter if you didn't get to the last boss. So long as you felt that your journey was rewarding enough, no matter how far into that journey that you got, that's what they don't understand. And with their next expansion, they will continue to not understand that really basic idea. Anyway, that's enough for the Q&A session, everyone. Thank you for watching. Thank you all for subscribing as well. 10K, that's massive. Okay, so I'm not sure what the next video coming up is going to be, but I'm sure it'll be pretty good anyway. Anyway, ah, bye.